This is Twit. Now, there, there's one thing that I have to talk about because this is has always been a fascinating thing to me from the moment that I learned about it. And that is the life of the humble chicken sexer. Um, sure. You, you sort of speak about, I, I kind of like the, the connection between uh, learning to be a chicken sexer and how machine learning at its heart kind of works, where we don't really know how to tell the difference. We, we don't have like a, if you ask a chicken sexer how they sex a chicken, they can't explain it to you. And yeah, you, you might want to explain what sexing a chicken yes, means. Yes, that is important. Further. That is very important. <laughs> so uh, when chicks are babies and they're trying to tell if the chick is male or female, uh, the female obviously will produce eggs and the male just eats your feed and is maybe not worth keeping around, sadly. Um, so they, they have people who can tell the difference between the two. It's not a process that's super simple and can be explained, but the way that they learn how to do it is... Uh, a person who is a professional chicken sexer uh, has some some folks who are learning how and they guess and then the, the professional chicken sexer is like, you were right, you were right, you were right, you were wrong. And then they just somehow figure out how it works, which is just wild. And it is not something that we understand really and can't be explained. And yet we accept it. And that is kind of uh, what we do with machine learning when we're teaching it. Uh, for example, you talk about uh, teaching it manuscripts and, or to, to be able to understand manuscripts. And uh, to, yeah, to recognize, the, scan in letters from old manuscripts and yes. figure out what the letters, identify the characters. Yeah, which it starts with with, you know, humans uh, properly identifying and then goes from there and it just opens up the world, the possibilities and we don't necessarily have to understand what happens in between because the outcome is what we're after in that case, whether it be chicken sexing or, or otherwise. But um, I, I don't know. I just so I just I, think that's a really I, good I, comparison. Um, good. Me, too. Um, so the chicken sexing problem is one that has uh, some traditional philosophers um, have taken as as interesting as an example of something because here's a case where we get knowledge and we know that it's knowledge in some sense because people get trained at it and they get enormously accurate and fast at it right I mean, there are people who who can do hundreds of sex hundred determine the sex of hundreds of chickens in an hour with making basically no mistake so there's something like knowledge going on there we cannot point to the features of the chicks that are telling the person why it's male or female. The males get ground up alive. It's really horrible. Some of us have been vegetarians for 40 years. It did not make me want to eat chicken again. So um, the, and machine learning can be like, like that. So I want to be clear, often we do know more or less at least some of why machine learning is making the choices that it does. But in the interesting cases, as of now, we, we don't. Mm -hmm. um, so machine learning can be like that. I, I think the 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 thing that bothered philosophers is that we, want, or philosophers, I'm sorry, I am not one, um, that philosophers want knowledge, things that we know to be justifiable and explainable. It's not enough that you say, oh, I have a I have an intuition who's going to win the the horse race. You have to for it to be knowledge, even if your intuition is right. For it to be knowledge, you have to be able to say why. You need some sort of justification for it, an explanation for it. And these chicken sexers clearly very making correct, truthful assertions, but can't can't tell us how, which is just weird in, in itself. But I think the the real question is, is life more like the philosophers think, or is it more like the chicken sexers think? Mm. When you learned what a bird was when you were very small, um, you weren't told, well, here are the here are the five characteristics of a bird. Uh, they have wings and feathers, they they fly, they have beaks, and I don't know, you know whatever it is. Or if you go back to Aristotle, it's, it's, um, it's always one distinction between other birds and things that are, and another distinction between what isn't a bird. Uh -huh. And so you're nice logically. But that's not how you learned. And if you go backwards now, and um, I ask you, uh, it's a bad example. Let me, uh, uh, so let's ins instead say it's a, what a, a vehicle is, a motor vehicle. Right. Nobody defined motor vehicle to you. They gave you some examples or you picked up the examples. 
Um, and if I were to ask you what a motor vehicle is, you may or may not be able to give me a definition. I'm not sure that I could. I think I'd struggle with it. Um, and then if I ask you, is a, uh, is a surfboard a vehicle? Is our skates a vehicle? Is a parachute a vehicle? You're going to say, uh, hmm, sort of, <laughs> kind of, I mean, and you're, you won't be bothered. You don't feel like now I have failed the vehicle test. It's that the world doesn't sort itself out into these nice categories, which we learn by definition. I think we learn much more like chicken sexers do in almost mm -hmm. every field in every case and throughout our lives than we do like we have thought we should under our classic and traditional understanding of how knowledge works. We can't always articulate what we know. Most of what we know, we can't articulate exactly. And we have, you know, we argue about it. Uh, you know, it, uh, is Fox News journalism? I mean, there's a political point to that. Um, but it's, it, yeah, sort of, sort of isn't. It's like asking, is Big Bird a bird? Yeah, I mean, kind of, terrible example <laughs> of a bird. But it, it's some, you know, it's, it's it's not an elephant. It's it's not a it's not a letter opener. It's not a barbecue. Guy. Yeah, it's life is way more like that, where we don't start with clear definitions and clear explanations. Um, sometimes we can fetch them up, but that's not how we organize the world. So, one of the things I think machine learning and AI is freeing us to accept is that we don't work by clear definitions, by a model of the world, precisely defined, here is what matters, here's how they enter. No, it's not how it works. It never was. Yeah, I, I would even argue that our ability to read is in some way based on, on that sort of uh, gray area because an R to me doesn't necessarily look like an R to you, but we can both recognize that character across thousands of different fonts and things like that. And so over time, we start to to learn what those characters uh, represent. And there, of course, is a little bit more focused education on what makes an R an R. But mm -hmm. over time, like I can read somebody else's handwriting, except for my doctors, of course, no one can read the doctor's handwriting. But other than that, you know, we can read each other's handwriting, yeah. even though it's uh, very variable. Very variable. Hmm. Uh, we, I could yes. talk to you all day about chaos theory, uh, but we are running out of time. I want.